it's uh, the meeting producer here. The live stream has now started. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Cornwall and Isles of Scilly Fire and Rescue Service Local Pension Board. Before consideration of today's business, I'll outline the protocols of the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When board members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a board member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn the meeting for a short period to try and re-establish the connection. As I call board members to speak, I'll remind you to switch on your microphone and if for some reason you cannot be heard, our Democratic Officer Lynn Beardsmore will advise you. The vote will be taken by roll call and the result will be announced by our Democratic Officer Lynn. Although there are no confidential matters on the agenda for this meeting, should such a matter arise during the meeting requiring the press and the public to be excluded from the meeting, board members will be required in turn to confirm and declare that there are no other persons present who are not entitled to either hear or see consideration of the matter. Where a board member has declared a non-registerable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at the most appropriate time. To confirm, the procedure for today's meeting is that board members who wish to speak on an item should indicate by placing an X in the chat box and I'll be monitoring um, the chat box throughout and voting will be by roll call. Before we start today's business, I will pass to Lynn Beardsmore, our Democratic officer, who will ask board members to confirm they are present and to state their title. Lynn Beardsmore, Democratic Officer. I'll now call your name. Please can board members confirm your name and your role, whether you represent employers or employees. Starting, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> with Victoria Wallens Hancock. Hi, Victoria Wallens Hancock, Chair of the Board. Catherine Billing. Catherine Billing, Employer Representative. Debbie Goodread. Uh, Debbie Goodread, Employer Representative. Gary Rich. Gary Rich, Employee Representative. Thank you. And the following officers are also in attendance. For the pensions team, Matt Allen, Employment Liaison Officer. Matt Davies, Assistant Pensions Benefits Manager. For the finance team, Shelley Bates, Service Accountant. And for HR, Liz Sandland, Employee Relations Manager. And for Democratic Services, Angela Saunders as meeting producer and myself as Democratic Officer. That's the roll call completed, Chairman. Over to you. Thank you. So starting on with the agenda item one, apologies for absence. Apologies have been received from Phil Martin and Stuart Whitworth. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item two. Um, any declaration of interest, please, from members of the board? No, nope. thank you. So moving on to agenda item three, minutes of the previous meeting. So everybody's got the minutes of the previous meeting within their packs. And if we could just go through page by page and then I will ask for a proposer and a seconder of the minutes. So page one in the packs, page two, page three, page four, and page five. So if I can ask for a proposer and seconder to put an X in the chat box. So I have proposer of Catherine Billing and a seconder of Deborah Goodread. The Democratic officer will now conduct the roll call vote. When your name is called, please state if you are for or against the proposal or if you are abstaining. 
Thank you, Lynn. It's more Democratic Services calling Catherine Billing. Yeah, Catherine Billing for. Debbie Goodread. Debbie Goodread for. Gary Rich. Gary Rich for. And Victoria Wallens Hancock. Victoria Wallens Hancock for. Thank you. That is unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item four, Cornwall and Arsers Silly Fire and Rescue Service Local Pension Board Business Update, and I will hand over to Matt Davies. Right, hi all. Um, usual contents in the update, the membership movements, um, the membership movements for the Arsers Silly as well, update from the South Western Wales Officer Group, L of the LGA bulletins, the risk register, the breaches log, the complaint log, and, and any other business. Um, so because we haven't had a meeting since uh, February, there's actually two quarters of membership movements. There's nothing really too unusual in the 92 scheme, although we did have one pension credit member, which is a person who has received an award following a divorce and they actually retired. So the de deferred membership of the 92 scheme has actually gone down by one and that's the first movement we had in the deferred membership I think for a number of years um, and we also had two firefighters who were uh, taper protected 92 members that had moved into the 15 scheme who retired now they retired at an age where their 2015 membership couldn't come into payment so they weren't actually recorded in the 92 scheme statistics because they were members of the 15 scheme, but now they've retired, they've actually come across and become pensioners in the 92 scheme. So it's a bit complicated, but that's why the overall membership has actually gone up uh, in the 92 scheme. Um, 2006 scheme, there's nothing really that unusual over the two quarters. Same with the RDS. Uh, modified scheme, not a lot going on with that scheme at the moment. And then we had the 2015 scheme. The main thing there is we've actually had uh, quite a few new members join. So over the whole six month period, we've got 31 new members in the scheme and not that many leaving, just a few deferreds and a couple of retirements. Uh, on to the Isles of Scilly. Uh, oh, sorry, is there any questions at all on the Formal membership. Okay, no questions. Enough. So, ours is silly. We actually had one deferred member um, retire, and that's the only thing that's really occurred in that scheme. So, deferred membership's gone down and pensioner membership's gone up. So, um, moving on to the South Western Wales uh, Pension Officer Group. Now, there's quite a few major things going on with fire pensions at the moment so there is a little bit of um, duplication to be honest because it's going to come up in our pension officers meeting in the LGA updates and bulletins but I'll try and keep the um, duplication to a minimum. Um, the last meeting we had was in June which was held virtually obviously um, because of that pretty much every fund was present and Clay, Claire Hay from the LGA was in attendance to give technical support. She started off by giving us uh, an update from the LGA and the Scheme Advisory Board. Um, often the virtual LPB members training, which I believe quite a few people from our board attended. And they've also started um, fortnightly catch ups for pension officers, which has been really helpful over the, um, the lockdown period, to be honest, because obviously we've had all the Sergeant uh, Matthews cases progressing. But we've been getting fortnightly updates, which we probably wouldn't have had if it wasn't for um, COVID. Um, the next thing was an update that they've provided quite a lot of information now on the LGA Fire Reg website about COVID and how it affects the scheme. A lot of it is reassurance for scheme members because some members are worried about effects on the stock market and such, which obviously don't accept, um, affect defined benefit schemes. Um, but there's quite a lot of Q&A's on there that are quite helpful. Um, there was also an update from um, from her about the Sergeant Remedy. It's actually moved on a little bit since then. So um, 
I'll probably pick it up on one of the later updates with the current position. Um, the protected pension age tax rules have been relaxed during the COVID period, so that would allow any firefighters that were retiring potentially to come back. Uh, it didn't actually affect any um, firefighters in Cornwall. We didn't have anybody that fell into that bracket, but that was quite good to see that HMT were actually bringing in that uh, relaxation. Um, the Scheme Advisory Board has had two virtual meetings since we last met. Um, unfortunately, the chair of that is actually retired, Malcolm Eastwood, which is a big loss because he was great. Uh, he's a very, very uh, um, vocal member of the board. Um, and then they considered whether or not we should be including projections on this year's annual benefit statements. You know, obviously there's a, um, an awful lot of unknown about how the sergeant remedy is going to be um, completed. So there is an argument to say that putting state uh, projections on the annual benefit statements is not that helpful because most of the benefits are going to change anyway. But the Scheme Advisory Board have come to the decision that they think we should still include projections for everybody, um, but to put in suitable caveats just to say that the sergeant remedy um, hasn't been reflected in this year's statements. Um, the communications group, which is coming on in a second, have actually put out some wording, which I believe Cornwall Fire Rescue have put around to all the firefighters already, just so that there's no um, expectation of having the sergeant remedy included on the statements. Um, next thing from Claire was an update from the um, technical group. Again, sergeant came up, but that was superseded by some notes further on. Um, and the O'Brien Matthews case was discussed again, which is the extension of the RDS modified exercise. I'm afraid we still don't know a great deal of detail about this, other than um, there's going to be quite a large number of firefighters uh, affected by this, I think, because I don't think that there's going to be any time limit to it. So we could be looking to backdate membership for modified pertained firefighters going back a long way. Obviously, that's going to create difficulties with finding pay information, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, the pensions regulator has started to supervise um, two fire and rescue authorities. Now, they have communicated to this to say it's not that they are um, inspecting those rescue authorities. They are just trying to understand the firefighters pension schemes uh, better and they feel the best way to do that is to have a relationship with four FRAs. Um, and the last thing that came up at technical group was about the government actuaries department have now issued their specifications for this year's valuation data. Um, the deadline for that is the 31st of December this year. So another thing to keep us busy over the summer. Um, communications group had also met, so Claire provided an update from that group as well. Uh, it covered all the same topics, to be honest. It was COVID, Sergeant Matthews, the annual benefit statements, um, the pensions admin strategy, which comes up in a moment with one of the um, bulletins, tax awareness for people getting promotion, and, and the aggregation guide, which is regarding combining different records within the pension schemes. <laughs> Uh, the minutes for that weren't actually out by the time we had our meeting, so unfortunately I can't give you much more information about what was discussed. Um, at the end of the meeting, there was two technical queries that were raised by one of the pension officers that, were, that was there. One was regarding Sergeant, in much as to say, should fire and rescue authorities be completing any preparation work now, uh, even though we don't actually know what the remedy is going to be. Um, and the opinion of the LGA at at the time and now is that really there isn't anything that we can do in advance until we know exactly what's got to be done. Once the remedy has been decided, that's when we need to start working. Unfortunately, we can't really try and preempt any of the decisions. Um, and then they raised a question about possible combination of retained and whole time records for firefighters. Um, and the particular example that they raised, they weren't able to combine them. They must be kept separate. Now the aggregation guide 
that the LGA are going to put out will help us make these sorts of decisions in the future. But unfortunately, I think by the time it comes out, it's going to be um, changed almost immediately by Sargent because obviously the combining of 2015 records won't, won't occur anymore. Um, we haven't actually organised the next meeting for, for this. We're going to wait until we've got some more information about the remedy hearing and how this is going to go forward. Uh, so we're going to probably try and not meet over the summer and probably meet September, October time when we know a bit more about what's going on. Um, any questions so far? I've got um, a couple of questions and a comment, Matt. It's Vicky yeah. Wallens Hancock Chair. Um, firstly, you mentioned coffee catch ups actually and, and how useful they are. Yeah. Are they open to all board members? At the moment, generally just because of the topics, it's only really um, pensions officers that have been attending. Yeah. I think last time there might have been a couple of fire and rescue, um, like fire and rescue pensions um, representatives that were there. But yeah, you're welcome to join if you like. Yeah, I just think it's useful for the board to, to know that um, that opportunity is there if, if they want to go sure. along to any. Yeah. Um, not having any in August. Um, it will start again in September. So next time the dates are, are available, I'll circulate them to the board. And then obviously it's not appropriate for you all to join, but one or two could come yeah. on and listen for sure. Yeah, brilliant. And that was going to be my next question, actually, whether they're ongoing, because you said that they're very much linked to COVID, but they're obviously of benefit to keep keep going. To be honest, I think they've been so well received over the summer, um, whilst we're in the midst of um, Sergeant Matthews, everything else that's going on and everything is changing so quickly. I think they'll continue to do that, do them, if not fortnightly, they might be monthly. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to confirm you referenced communications in relation to the current Sergeant position that has been um, forward to all um, fire service staff that went out in communications uh, a fortnight ago. Okay. And um, my only other question was in relation to you've mentioned a number of um, upcoming remedies, if you like, that are going to require dealing with. And the question really was around the capacity of the pension administration team to deal with those and yeah. whether that's um, a risk that we need to consider on the board. Yeah, it's I mean, it's on the risk register. Um, yeah. The trouble is that the, the remedy for these situations is going to be so um, complicated. It isn't a case of getting more staff in. Yeah, and I think every everybody that administers uh, public sector pensions is going to be in the same boat. So there's not going to be additional resource available. So hopefully they take that into account when they put um, the timescales in place for completing the remedies because you know, we can't just magic up people to do this. It's going to take take some time and it is going to be very complicated. Thank you, Matt. Sorry, I'll let you continue. Lovely. Um, so the next item is the uh, LGA bulletins. Uh, Jade has been circulating these to all the board members. So for future meetings, I'll probably just put links in rather than including the whole bulletin um, because you should already have had them and read them anyway. Um, there's been seven since the last board meeting, so I don't really propose to go through them all. Is there uh, any questions from any of the bulletins um, that the members have got at all? I've just got something to note, uh, Vicky Wallens Hancock Chair. Um, in the last couple of bulletins, it's been really useful um, information in there regarding communications for staff, and I think it's something that we would like to action from this board regarding improving our communications to staff, um, particularly around ongoing cases. And uh, in I think it was the most recent bulletin, there was a useful section in there regarding tax implications through promotion yeah. um, and attaching those to recruitment um, adverts just to make staff aware of any implications before they apply rather than um, being impacted afterwards with no forewarning. So there are some really useful um, bits and pieces in there that we need to be communicating to our staff. Okay. Um, Deb, Deborah Goodreed. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Deborah Goodread, um, employer representative. Um, it just follows on from what you just shared there, actually, and um, that was with regards to a conversation that we recently had about how we can utilise the information in those bulletins to keep our team members um, updated. One of the concerns that we did have, though, Matt, was um, especially around the sergeant remedy is if we almost put out regular comms to say that we're working on it but haven't yet got the remedies, does that create more queries for your team? Does that result in more people coming to you or would that be something you would advocate us looking to do? I think that would help. Maybe we are getting a number of queries now. Um, so far, so we've just been, everyone's been quite sensible and I think they have read that we can't help yet. So they are all aware of that. So yeah, any communication out you put out could only help really. Okay, so on that basis then what we would look to do is on following on to what Victoria's just shared is we would look to sort of utilise the information in there but keep a, a running update as well with regards to sort of the remedy position so that you're not hopefully getting inundated with queries. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving back to Matt. So I'll move on then from the, the bulletins if there's no other questions. Um, the latest bulletin 34 um, actually launched a draft uh, pension admin strategy um, and there's a consultation running on that throughout the summer to the 31st of August. Now this isn't something that we actually do for fire we do do it for local government for our we, the reason we do it for local government is we've got so many employers in the fund but for fire obviously we've only got the two um, but after the Aon um, admin uh, survey that they did uh, uh, two years ago now I think they said it would be a good idea for pension funds to put these in place so the um, consultation as I say runs over the summer we'll certainly be putting something in from the pensions board towards it and it would probably be an idea if the uh, fire and rescue authority also looked at it um, the draft of the admin strategy is, is in the appendix um, I don't know if there's any comments on it from the board, but as far as the pension fund was concerned, we were quite happy with it. There was a few of the timescales in there we might suggest are slightly longer because I don't think some of them are really achievable. But um, I don't know if the board has had a chance to any, look at any of those um, the drafts at all. Or was there any comments? Thanks, Matt. Um, on behalf of the board as chair, I will be um, looking at that consultation and, and probably in conjunction with yourself submitting um, a response on behalf of the fire authority and the pension team. So yes, we'll we'll definitely be looking at that. And I appreciate your comment around the timeline, particularly with everything else that's going on with the annual, annual benefit statement deadline. Yeah. Yeah, but I think all in all, it's a good thing, to be honest, if we do firm up what the fire authority are responsible for and what we're responsible for um, and the timescales for, for both sides. So yeah, I think that'd be a good idea to get that in place. OK, so the next item is the risk register. Um, we've had a couple of changes on it since the last meeting. Um, item two, which is the data protection 